This class covers microeconomics. It's the study of how people make the millions of tiny everyday decisions that when taken together, drive our economy. Should you drop out of high school and start working? If you're dating someone, should you marry them? If you run a Starbucks, how much should you charge for coffee? Should your taxes be higher or lower? Which shoes should Jennifer Lawrence wear to the Oscars? The key inside of economics is that there's one thing linking all these questions I just asked, trade-offs. With each decision, if you go down one path, that means you give up the chance to go down another path. Or, and this is probably the most important concept in the course, every action you take has an opportunity cost. An opportunity cost is the cost of any action in terms of what you could have done instead. If you drop out of high school, you could start making money right away. But you give up the chance to get a high school and college degree, both of which would make you more money later. So there's a trade-off. Opportunity cost turns out to be an incredibly powerful way to look at the world. With this very simple framework, we can really understand the entire economy. This course will be about doing over and over again one type of exercise, asking how people or businesses can make themselves as well off as possible given the trade-offs that they face. In mathematics, we have a name for this, constrained optimization. Constrained is about trade-offs. Any decision that you take has an opportunity cost in terms of what else you could have done. Optimization means making yourself as well off as possible. So constrained optimization means making yourself as well off as possible given opportunity costs. And this is the building block for our entire economic system. A classic example of constrained optimization is the manager of Starbucks asking whether to raise the price of coffee by 25 cents. If she raises the price, she can make more money on the coffee she sells. But when the price goes up, folks might buy less coffee. She has to decide how to make the most money given that trade-off. This probably doesn't sound new to you. You're used to thinking about trade-offs. For example, consider one of the first decisions you made today. What to wear. Should you wear clothes that look good but are less comfortable? Or clothes that don't look so good but are more comfortable? You have a goal. You want to look good. But you have a trade-off. To look good, you have to be less comfortable. So you have to decide how good to look given the discomfort of dressing up. Sometimes the high heels look good enough that it's worth the pain. Sometimes the pain isn't worth it. Why is economics so powerful? Because a few simple tools will give you insight into how all these decisions get made. Some of these include decisions you're already used to making, and this course will help you see these decisions differently. Maybe you'll even make better choices. Other decisions we study may not be ones you normally encounter, but studying them will help you understand people, businesses, and the economy better. One last thing. How do we study all these decisions? Even the simplest decision you make involves tons of information and variables. The key to economics is that we'll always be simplifying things down by developing models. What's a model? Think of a model like a subway map for the city. This map can show you how to get from one subway stop to another, but it's simplified. It doesn't show you the buildings or the roads or the trees because you don't need all that stuff. Is it perfect? No. It can't get you from one street address to another, but it does get you 90% of the way there. A subway map is like a model of a city. It's a simplified representation that illustrates how people get from point A to point B. And in this course, we'll basically be drawing subway maps for any decision you would make. So take your decision on what to wear today uncomfortable but fashionable clothes, or more comfortable clothes that look worse. What you decide could conceivably depend on your mood, the brand of the clothes, the day of the week, the weather, and so on and so on. But to build a useful model of your clothing decision, we could simplify things by assuming that your choice depends only on how comfortable the clothes are and how good they look. Again, our models like the subway map. It doesn't cover every minute detail, but it's good enough to get you 90% of the way there. 
Before we conclude, one important note on how this course works. Any model we use during this course will be explained in three ways. The first and most important is intuitively, explaining the underlying thought process behind the model. The second is graphically, showing using graphical tools how the model actually works. And the third is mathematically. Math can be a powerful tool to explain economics, but it can also be overwhelming. So most of the math in this class will take place in special mathematical supplements to the lecture. Let's turn as an example to the most important model in economics, supply and demand.